Welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Bond. On today's show, we start off Sam Darnold and the Vikings might be the best team in football right now. Are they Super Bowl contenders? We get into that. The Jags, they're super, super disappointing. 0-4 start. We do fraud performance of the day. It's the most surprising team, disappointing team, the keep your head up team, uh, the bet on your life wide receiver. We get into all that on today's episode. Make sure to download SeatGeek. Use code CarterCast for $20 off your first purchase. Let's go ahead and get into the show. All right, we're live. NFL week four recap. Week four, right? We're not missing anything. It's been a long day here, fellas. Went to the Panthers game. I can, you can see a little sun on me. I got a little sunburn, you know? Look at you, well, a little vitamin D. Yeah. What's that, about yeah. that D, baby? Yeah, I'm What's not. I'm not Carter. Is that a glimmer of hope in Andy uh, Dalton and the Panthers oh, right there? Oh, no. Yeah. He's got that <laughs> smile on his face, Dylan. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Connor's back, by the way. I know you're watching. Uh, you saw. You heard me on the intro, but Connor's back. We got Dylan here. We got NFL Week 4. Yeah, I know. I got a little burnt today. If you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, I mean – I, guys, I'm not in my mom's basement anymore. I, I moved upstairs. I'm in, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm in the, the upstairs haters are now, furious. At, even though I'm at my parents' house in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> They're furious. Now, uh, Carter, before we get in, are we going to touch on the fact that you threw your drink on Chase Brown at the end of the game? Ooh, uh, I look. can neither confirm nor deny these reports. Uh, Anti-Illinois? No, no, I walked out. I walked out. I needed Xavier Leggett to cash a last leg of a parlay for me. Shout out, Chip. And... Uh, and I once he made that catch, I ran out of the stadium to try and beat traffic. <laughs> Xavier Leggett, coolest accent of any NFL player. You just listen to him talk, and you're like, I like that guy. Um, uh, we'll have to get stats department on that one, but it seems like a clear favorite, <laughs> minus a thousand. Anyhow, <laughs> there's, this is where I wanted to start off. It kind of goes in. I mean, it's part of the Panthers game too, fellas, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, fellas of the Carter Cast, fans of the Carter Cast. Gingers are running the NFL right now. <laughs> Holy crap! You might be right. Sam Darnold Ginger, counts, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you I might mean, be right. Might, might be Red Rocket. This is what South Park was so scared of. This was their <laughs> biggest nightmare. And now <laughs> Sam Darnold and Andy Dalton might be two of the top five quarterbacks in this league right now. These guys are playing out of their minds. It's more specifically to the Vikings, and that's where I want to start things off today. Wow, wow, this Vikings team. This doesn't feel like remember we all remember a couple years ago when that Vikings team went twelve and five and you know they're pulling out these crazy wins and like, oh, you know, but clearly they were just getting lucky. This doesn't feel lucky. This feels genuine and it feels dominant, Connor. I'm with you here and I just can't believe in the year 2024 we've got Sam Darnold putting on this type of performance. Like if you saw that last touchdown to Justin Jefferson, like people were freaking out about the catch he made. That ball was placed right on the numbers in only a spot where he could catch it. It was yep. such a good throw. And, yes, they started off hot. They kind of, you know, slowed down a little bit in the second half there. The Packers made a little bit of a run. But listen to this stat. The Vikings have trailed for less than three and a half minutes all season. And we're through week four. Yeah. This is the and Minnesota Vikings Connor, we're talking about. Connor, that is that is their game plan this year, too, is just get out early and then two yep. o'clock, run the ball, manage the game. And that is – it's worked – obviously, it's worked for them. They're 4-0. Oh. But that's like they – come out of the gates hot. They're explosive. They take a lead. They take a two-score lead, and then they just kind of reel it back. Aaron, We've talked about it multiple times. Aaron Jones, Ty Chandler, whichever one, any given week, one of them is going to have a great game, 60, 70 yep. rushing yards. It's just – it is amazing to see that the Vikings are able to do this with Sam Darnold, and it goes to speak to the point that we've made all years. Like, when you draft a rookie quarterback, why start why start him year one? Like yeah. we've seen this go so poorly with Sam in Carolina, New York, 49ers, eh, it it was fine, I guess. No, that was not, his not get right going year, here. Though. That was that was rehab. Exactly. yeah, exactly. And and now that we're what? We're seven, six, seven years out of this. I'm gonna say it again. Rose Bowl twenty seventeen looked great against Ohio State. <laughs> it did look this great. Is, I saw we're now those, seeing those highlights Sam, popped up on my timeline. You're lying. Day. I was on the, my flight. I was on my flight getting ready to go to Chicago, and all of a sudden, I'm like Sam Darnold, Rose Bowl highlights. <laughs> it's impressive, dude's got <laughs> a cannon. Be, it's but Connor, very you're exactly right. They're they're running the game they want to play. They're getting out early, and then from there, it's just try to take care of the ball. Let your defense do it. That's that's something that you know we we can talk Sam Darnold. This defense has impressed mm -hmm. big time throughout yep. the first four weeks. Love what I'm seeing from the Vikings here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I honest question. Honest question. 
Super Bowl contenders? Like, have we changed our tune that much? No, no. I don't I, think I've changed. I don't know. Much. Maybe dark horse playoff win, make a splash, give a good team a good game, but win the Super division Bowl winners. Win the division. Now, win the division. Play. That's in now play. win the division. It's going to come down. To, it really feels like it's going to come down to those Lions versus Vikings games. Those two games are probably going to decide this division. And that win today is so big. Getting that win over the Packers in Lambeau, Can, getting that win is massive. I, again, I understand. I don't want to derail the conversation here, but all three of us are uh, majority shareholders in Jordan Love stock. How are we uh, feeling? How are we feeling? I he was, I was never came, too big on that train. Oh, also, yeah. Okay, Go back Connor. and watch the tape. I'll go watch was, the tape. It was I Brian. Went, go back I, and watch the tape. I, and I also went back and watched the tape today. I was at the Panthers game, so I didn't get to see much games live. I tried to pull stuff up on my phone, but that's a disaster at a football game. But anyhow, Jordan Love, I think he just came back a week too early. They should have they played fair. Malik Wills today. They, you know, just because he wasn't putting a lot of weight on, putting a lot of weight on it. I was, I, I think he came back a little too early. And I'm not worried about Jordan Love. He he seemed a little bit scared to get hit, probably because the injury like back a little bit early. But some of those throws, when he felt a little bit of pressure, he would just chuck it down the field. Like yeah. a couple of those picks yeah. were bad. Like they were pretty bad. But Dylan, you know, go back and watch the pre the preview show. I was not on the Packers train. I was not on the Packers train. Well, no, 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 no. Not this year. But, you know, last year was when this train was starting to, you know, garner some interest. People were starting to buy tickets. So I was like, oh, can, can we get access to this train? And I, I think you were trying to get on. Well, I stepped off after there was a year of game film. I, I got off at that next stop. I was I, like, thank you, Mr. Conductor, but I'm going to I'm going to head home. I don't think I'm out after this performance, but because I chalk three interceptions that I can kind of chalk up to game state, just, you know, yes, you're down, you're going to have fair, to throw the ball yeah. down the field, but also it didn't look great. I'm not super confident that the value of my Jordan love <clears throat> stock is going to go up. You want to hear something crazy? Yes. We're, we're, we're gambling guys. You want to hear the MVP odds right now? As oh, we're taping this Sunday night, 8 PM, yes. Josh Allen's the favorite plus 200 Mahomes plus 300 CJ Stroud plus 650. You want to know the fourth MVP favorite? Sam Darnold, 13 to 1. Wow. Fourth I love in it. MVP odds. Are you I kidding me? He's not winning the MVP. No, no. I just think that's, that's awesome. Per- that's perfect he, time to get odds on somebody else because he you know should he's not win winning. comeback player of the year if he doesn't, though. Yes, I would agree with that. He should win I'd comeback player of the year. Going Unless back Joe to the Flacco. Vikings. Talk, maybe Joe, Joe Flacco, Flacco this year <laughs> coming in for the Colts. We'll talk about that game in a little bit. But with Sam Darnold, last thing I wanted to touch on with him. The throws he's been making this season, that's the other part of this that just doesn't feel like it's lucky. These are just unbelievable throws. I mean, he's confident. He has full confidence back, and that's so important with a quarterback. We talk about these guys like Zach Wilson and Bryce Young that just their confidence gets gets destroyed. You look at Dalton and Darnold. These guys are slinging it, slinging it confidently. The, the one thing I want to see from Sam Darnold moving forward, and he just hasn't been put in this position yet, is how he reacts when he does get down. Say the Vikings find themselves down two scores. Can he put the team on his back and make the – and we've seen him make the throws so far to every point you said. I don't want to discredit that. But when you're down 14-0, 14-3, can he be the guy that he puts the team on his back and leads him to a win? It would be interesting to see, and he hasn't done it yet. And to be honest, if he doesn't have to the rest of the season, that's a win. Hey, next week, comeback player of the year bowl, Jets Vikings in London. (laughs) In London, that's what I was going to say. A A little quick, a little brief into our preview this week. Make sure to subscribe to that. Tune into that preview later this week. But uh, who do we like in that one? Does London help the Vikings real quick? Oh, man. Help the Vikings. Why would it help the Vikings and not the Jets? That's what I'm wondering. I don't know. Hmm. I, th- I mean, we if we want to use this segue into the awful Jets Broncos game, uh, Jets that <laughs> the Jets offense did not look great. I mean, really bad across the board. What's the so? Have you guys seen the line for this game? Huh? No. Want to guess it? Yeah. Go for it. Uh, Jets by two and a half. I'm going Vikings two and a half. Vikings two and a half. Okay. Let's I thought go. there was going to be some spin zone where it's like the books don't believe in Sam Darnold and this is yeah. going to be the week. I'll be honest. I think I might like the Jets there just as a clear bounce back spot and everyone's going to get on, on the Sam Darnold train a little too late. They're look, I think well, so you know, too. You got a bye week looking ahead if you're the Vikings. We'll see. But I don't know. That's a good defense. But I, you're right, Dylan. I want to see Sam Darnold go down and come back from a game because they've had a lead nonstop. You mentioned that stat, Connor. And I need, I yeah, need to be pause. clear. That's not Sam Darnold. That's not me doubting Sam Darnold. He's great. Yeah. 
Just what I want to see. I want to see it. The Jags. Oh, Ooh. let's do it. Let's Ooh. get into it. Oh, shoot. I, I got a page full. Go ahead. Uh, you want me to start here? <laughs> I think if you're the Jags and Trevor Lawrence just signed a five-year, $275 million <laughs> extension in June and $200 million of that's guaranteed, and after Dak's contract, he's now tied for the second highest paid quarterback in the league, what are you really getting right now? You look at some of these numbers, guys. He's taking a clear step back. Trevor Lawrence this year, 53.4% completion percentage through four games. He's been above 65 the last two years. That is a huge drop-off. And we can't even say it's, oh, receivers are dropping this, yada, yada, yada. ETN, not an elite running back, so the running game's not great. But the receivers have been okay. Christian yep. Perk's been okay. Brian Thomas Jr. is a stud. You see him in the red zone. But it's just Trevor Lawrence missing these throws that he should be making is really what it is. And it's gotten to the point where even the receivers will stop their route five yards in and be like, all right, he ever threw me again. Like you saw no. some of those Christian Kirk routes, and it's like, there it is, sailing he, over my head. He had that one back corner of the end zone. He had his guy. He just overthrew him by three, four, five yards. Connor, I like what you're saying here, and I want to bring bring attention to something. In this game specifically against the Texans, the the game plan – was set out for them. The Minnesota Vikings pretty much gave every single team in the NFL what you need to do against the Texans. Neutralize the run threat, make C.J. Stroud throw 50 times a game. That's not me saying Stroud is bad, but you saw whenever the Texans got down, they couldn't run the ball. Stroud had those two interceptions. You forced him to make throws. The game plan was out in front of these guys, right? The Jags had the game plan, and they couldn't do it. You talk about Trevor Lawrence on late downs, 31% success rate. That's positive EPA on a play success rate, 31%, 27% when passing. Now, if you want to chalk that up, you could maybe say poor play calling, maybe poor play calling on late downs. That's a part of it. I'm still going, like, we're not seeing the Trevor Lawrence we've seen the last two, three. Like, we, we're not seeing that. And that's a huge problem if you're Jacksonville. So, is there cause for concern for Trevor Lawrence for Jacksonville? I think so. Let me play devil's advocate. Do we think that this is the baseline for Trevor Lawrence? Do we think that there's positive regression incoming because we've seen him play better or was he playing over his baseline before? And now we're kind of seeing him come back down to earth. I don't know. It's, it's hard to have confidence that he's going to be this great quarterback again, but I, I would, I would lean towards this is his baseline. I would hope it's his baseline because either way, this has been pitiful and Connor mentioned it too. He's missing throws, not just today. He's been missing throws all season to all season. wide, wide open receivers on big downs. You talk about that goal. They get stuffed on the goal line when they're down four or they were up three, 20 to 17. They get stuffed on the goal line. Just how do they not score? And then a QB draw. I think that's up to play calling right there. I also think I don't think Doug Peterson and this coaching staff should not be at fault either. I think this is a lot uh-huh. more of a two way street. I know I you say they neutralize the run and everything, but the individual plays, more so probably coming from the offensive coordinator, has not been great in Jacksonville. I I I don't know. I don't know. I think you can I think two parties are at fault here, the coaching and Trevor Lawrence. Because That's like I said, on late downs, you have to have the correct play calling, and they were awful. Third and fourth downs today, they were awful. So I don't I think it's a little bit of both, and I think this is a serious problem in Jacksonville. We we gave them the benefit. The only reason they kept this game close was because of the muff punt. That's the only reason mm-hmm. they covered this game. So, it, like, Houston really took control of this game. They did get stuffed on the goal line, Jacksonville did. Like, it wasn't a domination. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I just have a tough time. You see the score of 24-20, to 20, and you think this game's close. It's like, uh, well, I don't know. A lot of things to worry about here for Jacksonville. What's concerning as a Jags fan is, like I said, if you just paid this guy $275 million and all of a sudden you look at like the league leaders in some of these stat categories and you see Trevor Lawrence, second worst completion percentage in the NFL behind only Anthony Richardson, Bryce Young is above him in that category right now. He's $275 million quarterback. There's concerns there and just seeing his name at the bottom of all these stat categories with all the rookie quarterbacks, with Deshaun Watson, with Bryce Young, with Anthony Richardson, Bo Nix down there, like Trevor Lawrence should not be in that group. No. With all that guaranteed money. He should not be. I know it's been four games. He should not be down there. That, Tre- that is cause for concern as a Jax fan. Trevor Lawrence today, 8% completion percentage, under expected. Not even over expected, under expected. <laughs> Minus eight. 
That's not good. That is not good. They, yeah, thing, there's real issues in Jacksonville. Now they're 0-4, and after Monday, after tomorrow, today, whenever this comes out, they could be the last team without a win. Just well, they're saying. They're, real quick, Carter, they're bottom five in sacks allowed. They're sixth worst in opponent's yards per game. That was before Houston put up 440 today on them, and they're <laughs> sixth worst in yards per game on offense. It's just, you know, every single category, you see Jacksonville or Trevor Lawrence near the bottom, and they're, they were supposed to take a leap this year. Yeah, you're still waiting on Trevor Lawrence to take that jump. And Houston tried to give it to him, too. 12 penalties, 97 yes. penalty yards. They tried to do something here, and they didn't do it. We'll talk a little bit about the Texans, too, as well. Okay. Connor, and you mentioned that you guys mentioned this, too. They're blasting all these stats and everything. The most frustrating part, if you're a Jags fan, is you have talent on this roster. Yes. You have yes. real talent. You have a number one overall. You have two number one overall picks on this roster. You have Brian Thomas. This guy's a stud. You have Christian Kirk, the receiving course there for Trevor Lawrence. ETN should be a great running back. It's he just, hasn't developed. It's one plus one equals three right now for the Jaguars. So it yeah. doesn't make any sense. Very frustrating for them. Dylan, what was your most fraudulent performance today? Most fraudulent performance, I, you know me, I like to zig when everybody's zagging. This is actually a team that lost, but they still played so poorly, and the game was close. Green Bay Packers. Oh. Mm. Green Bay Packers. Because, you know, we saw the Vikings. I thought we were you going another the, green team. You, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll get to them. We'll get to them. The You look at the final score, you see 31-29, and you're like, oh, the Packers kept us a game. And they're, you know – some late game theatrics that that's why we have the score. Uh, they only had a positive EPA on 41% of their plays. That is awful. You have Jordan love throwing three interceptions. And I understand game state dictates some of that, but part of that is if you're the Packers, you don't let the game state get that bad. You don't go down by as much as you did. Now we can right. say, Oh, well they did a good job of coming back. They didn't, they didn't count themselves out. They didn't give up and that's fine. That's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And looking forward on this Packers team, I'm looking at this sheet right here. It's rbsdm.com. Statistical nerds. Virus? <laughs> no, no <laughs> virus. No virus. It has EPA per play. Success Sounds rates. like a Roman Swipes website, Dylan. A whole bunch of fun. Hey. It's like one of those websites where you use a pop-up on StreamEast whenever you click yeah, the stream or something. You're, you're using StreamEast <laughs> and all of a sudden you're like, oh, crap. <laughs> close, close, close. <laughs> Find 40-year-old moms in your area. No, 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 X, X, X. No CC required. Hey, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't know what you're talking about. Sponsorship, maybe. Uh, w anyway, I'm looking at this, and you just see a purple means bad on this, on this website. A whole bunch of purple for the Packers. And looking forward, it's hard to get excited about this Packers team when you see that, okay, they kept it close against the 4-0 Vikings. But if you dig deeper, man, this was a fraudulent performance, a fraudulent mm -hmm. final score from the Packers. I'm going Green Bay Packers. I think that's a great pick, too, because the Vikings were dominant in this game. The Vikings oh, were dominant. Away. I think there is an asterisk on this game, and I think it's because Jordan Love was not 100%. That would be my mm -hmm. only callback. Okay. If he was 100% in this game, therefore, I think you're 100% right. Clickbait. Clickbait. Does Malik Willis win this game? <laughs> no. He's 2-0? I don't think so. He's 2-0? Yeah. He does. Yeah, he's 2-0. Who is he 2-0 against? Uh, Titans and Colts? Vikings exactly. defense is a step up from that. Okay. Point well, not, not the tight, tight defense is good, but anyway. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah just the dumbest quarterback in the league. You know? we'll, Whatever. Well, well, he's learning, so. At least yeah, he's, he's still playing. Yeah. At least he's still playing. Connor, most fraudulent, most fraudulent team. I'm having a stroke today. So the number one team I wrote down for this was the Houston Texans. We've already talked about that too much, though. Ooh, because to just, the club. Yeah, well, that was mine just because I feel like the Jags lost that game more than the Texans won it, and the Texans are 3-1. and one. How many of those three wins really feel convincing to you? Because the answer for me is zero. There's not been a convincing win by this Houston team yet this year. But the other one I wrote down that I think we should talk about, how about the Atlanta Falcons? How about the Atlanta Falcons, Dylan? Because guess what? Zero offensive touchdowns today. They took a 58-yarder from Young Way Koo to win that game off of a PI penalty on that last drive. Bijan Robinson, Kyle Pitts have been major disappointments this year, especially Kyle Pitts. And I don't know if that's their fault. I don't know if it's play calling or what. Kirk Cousins was one of the quarterbacks that targeted his tight ends the most last year. So I don't know what, who to point to here. I don't know who to point to here. The Saints had 11 more first downs than Atlanta, 50 more total yards, and over 11 minutes more on time of possession, and they still lost. I don't think the Falcons should have won that game. So that's probably I, my choice for the most fraudulent performance. I'll, I'll chime in here. They are a legitimate contender 
for me for this, I actually thought about putting them because you look yeah. at, I mean, they didn't have success on early downs, didn't have success passing. The one thing that excited me about the Falcons today was Kirk Cousins was taking shots down the field, almost 10, uh, 10 yards average depth of target. And that's something True. positive because you don't always get that from him. This Falcons defense, I came into this year thinking this Falcons defense was going to be a lot better than what it's shown us. A lot better than what it's shown us. Yeah. So, and I guess that's hard to say when they, you know, score, you know, pick six or whatever. But yeah, it, lots to lots to be concerned with the Falcons. I agree with you there, Connor. Texans were my number two team. Falcons were my number one. Mm, Falcons wow. were, that was pitiful today. I it had wasn't to, great. I had, so I didn't get to watch a live, like I mentioned before. So I'm keeping up with the box score at the game. You're like, you look at the stats, you're looking at everything. You're like, how, how in the world is this a game? How are the Falcons in this? If you have a B, if you have Bijan in fantasy, if you have a Falcons player in fantasy, you're, it, they're terrible. Uh, they're, Tyler Algier. Yeah, if you have Taysom Hill, you're taking a naked lap outside. You're so excited. Though. Yeah, on my on, bench. On my on, bench. <laughs> yeah, if he's on someone's bench like me too, I feel. Oh you man. But anyhow, you want the Falcons? I think he's a great pick. I don't need to reiterate what Connor said. Texans as well. They were on there. I've been on the Texans fraud train all season, even though they are three and one. C.J. Stroud is a great quarterback, but I have real concerns because they are just winning these weird games, and I think the Texans have played the four dumbest teams in football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. The Texans? Yes. Well, what about the Vikings? The, are the Vi Vikings aren't dumb, are they? No, but that's why they lost. I, I, they beat no, the three see, dumbest teams okay. in football. Beat, I see yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Three dumbest beat, teams. Yeah, and okay, they got okay. annihilated by the Vikings. Yeah, annihilated. They did. They got um, any, bullied. The Colts. Oh, go ahead. I was about to say, just so people were listening at home, so they remember who the Texans have defeated. The Colts, Anthony Richardson Colts, only won by two in that game. Horrible. Sunday night against Caleb Williams and the Bears, Caleb Oof. Williams could not complete a pass in that game. Not, I don't think that, and it wasn't due to the Texans' defense. He just couldn't hit an open receiver yep. to save his life. Really bad. And then somehow, some way, pulled out this Jaguars game because Trevor Lawrence could not complete a pass in the red zone. And now, next week, we're really going to see what this Texans team is all about. Crazy this isn't a Sunday night football game. A 1 o'clock game against the Bills? This mm. should be the. This is one of the best games of the year. You're gonna give Bills three prime time in a row. Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, man. they're fun to watch. They're they good. Are fun to watch. <laughs> they are they fun are to watch. <laughs> they are fantastic. My other team, Maybe. I had this because I was worried. I I was worried Dylan was gonna do the Texans and Connor was gonna do the Falcons. Briefly, the Say Bengals it. are a little fraudulent. <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't this isn't a, a thing talking oh, about how man. awesome the Panthers are and a homer pick about the Panthers. The the Bengals really got bailed out by penalties today, and that defense yeah. is such a, such a such a concern. They are, they are yeah. a bottom three defense. Hendrickson gets hurt today. If Hendrickson if Hendrickson's out for an extended period of time, they had other guys get hurt too on their starting defense. This team could be looking at the thirtieth, thirty first, thirty second worst defense in this league, and yeah. that's what's really concerning because look. I love Andy Dalton. I love this Carolina Panthers team. I don't think they're that good. And the Panthers were kind of yeah. having their way with this defense. If Zach Moss doesn't extend his arm right before the half to score that touchdown, this is a totally different ball game. Seriously. Yeah. The Panthers were in that. They were and still if, in it at the end. And if it wasn't for these f fake penalties that the Bengals got bailed out on, yeah. we're talking about the Bengals being we're talking about the Bengals like we are the Jags, and that's how we open the show. Very, very critical plays there at the end of the half. But they're not – the Falcons and Texans, I think, are better ones because the Texans barely sweep that out. And uh, the, the any, Bengals – go any ahead. Any love for the Bears in this category, beating the Rams today? Mm. Or is that more of just like a man? It's more of a man. You know, okay. I, I'm just I curious. Think, I think it's more of the Rams are just so depleted. Yeah. They look, I feel Connor, bad for Stafford. They this, still almost won. I know. I know. Connor, this feels a lot like – this is an NBA analogy here – Feels like the Memphis Grizzlies of last year. They're just mm, they're that's a well coached team and they're just <laughs> depleted. Everything that could go wrong for that Grizzlies team went wrong last year, and we're seeing the same thing with the Rams. Yeah, where it's like, oh, Desmond Bain might be back in two months, and it's like, oh, Jaws coming back. Oh, he's out again after ten games. And, yeah, and then next offseason, everyone's gonna be like, Whoo, I kinda like the Rams to you know, I kinda like that Rams yeah. win total. Cup's healthy, Puka's yeah. healthy, Stafford's healthy. Sounds Nick like our preview show this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. That's exactly, tough. exactly. Can I, can I um, say something about the Bengals real quick? I, yeah, real because quick, I yeah. agree with you. I think the the offense is great. We saw it against Washington on Monday Night Football. We see it again this week. 
the rush defense, guys, it's a huge problem. Carolina was having they they were uh, they were running the ball on early downs and having so much success. It, it was very troublesome. The Bengals are going to have to clean the defense up, specifically the rush defense, but the pass defense too. Guess who they play next week? Who? The Baltimore Ravens. Ooh, yeah, that's tough. That's tough. That's that's going to be a beatdown. They might give up 300 yards on the ground. I love it. You know, Just you know a crazy? touchdown? The, the Ravens are going to beat the Bills tonight and then beat the Bengals next week, and the narrative is going to completely flip on Baltimore. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, say that one more time, Connor. They're going to lose to the Bills and then beat the Bengals? They're going to beat them both. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, brr, brr, breaking news. Um, I guess I can... Say it now, unless and so we talk about this game. Rasheed Rice, feared to have torn ACL. Oh, that's Stuff. big news. That's a big Stuff. blow. That's Xavier Worthy stock Chiefs. Xavier Worthy stock. It's that emoji. Mahomes just pulls these games out though. We're going oh back to Juju gosh. Smith, guys. Are we going to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs as a field goal favorite or more? Auto Let's fade. They cover again. The ch- the Chargers cover again. Oh oh, the line closed at six and a half though. Well, that's your fault if you got six and a half. You should be, <laughs> yeah, you should no. be watching the NFL kickoff show I, I on didn't touch it. I didn't touch it, but yeah, you're right. You should be tuning in. If you, that if live you watch stream. the show, you got eight and a half. So thank yeah, you. Eight and a half. Yeah, you know what no. upset me a little bit? Did you guys, I don't know if you guys were listening to the broadcast at the very end of that game with Jim Nance and Tony Romo, and they said, oh, like, who are the haters going to troll this week now that Travis Kelsey had a good game? Like, find yeah. somewhere else, haters, and all this stuff. He's bound to have one game with 70 receiving yards out of every three or four. Can we stop with that? Like, <laughs> He's clearly lost a step. It's not like he's a bad player. He's just not going to get 100 yards every game. It sounds like the it sounds like the home broadcast crew for the Golden State Warriors talking about Steph Curry whenever Jim Nance and Tony Romo do a Chiefs game. It is I th- shocking. <laughs> I also yeah. think Travis Kelsey now has turned into like he's like a teenage boy where he, you're just like, hey, can you please do the dishes? And you're just like, oh, no, I don't feel like it. Oh, <laughs> no, Travis Kelsey, can you please catch a touchdown? And help us win this game today. Oh, oh. Do I have to run routes today, or can I just like, like pretend? He gets fifty yards is the equivalent to like a teenager like picking up their clothes in the room. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. oh, nice yes. job! Like Woo-hoo. so respectful. Like, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So yeah, they pulled. They barely pulled that one out today. So I just saw a tweet. You know, uh, Dov Nick Sirianni was asked why Saquon Barkley only had two carries in the team's first three drives. Disclaimer: I didn't watch this game. Sirianni's explanation was <laughs> awful. I would be shocked if he's not fired by the end of the season, but it's a video, so I don't know what he said. Oh, boy. I can't wait. Well, I can't wait to watch that video. Well, that was the number one thing I wrote down. Is why the hell is Saquon Barkley getting, what, 12 touches in this game? <laughs> and is that also, what it was? <laughs> oh, shoot. Go ahead, so, Dylan. Let's no, talk about no, the Eagles. I just, I, you know, I, the Titans didn't play today. Everybody on this earth knows that I am the number one Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan when the Titans aren't playing. So obviously I had to break out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey. (laughs) Guys, nothing, nothing makes me happier, right? And we we do this every week. That's the thing. If, if, If you're watching and you're like, I'm so tired of Dylan doing the Eagles thing. Get a new head coach or something, right? Get, do something to make the <laughs> Eagles win because if the Eagles Get keep losing, bit. we're going to have this exact same conversation every single week. Now, here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on offense, right? You're missing A.J. Brown. You're missing your right tackle. Devonta Smith. And Devonta Smith. Smith. L- Lane Thomas. Which makes it even more crazy that Saquon Barkley got 12 touches. <laughs> missing both it's those insane. guys. Oh, my gosh. Insane. Yeah, And that's it, – it's gross mismanagement. And we're going to have this conversation about Nick Sirianni and – Anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm pulling up stats here and I'm trying to filibuster. Well, that I got you real quick. That defense, Bucks outgained Philly 445 to 227. Oh, yardage. That is and awful. that's the other Speak thing to we me. talked about. We talked about most fraudulent teams. I wanted to put the Bucks in there because I was watching the. I was at the Panthers game. I see the score. I'm like, okay, the Bucks, they're frauds, whatever. And then you look at the stats, and then you go wa- go back and watch the tape. It was just domination. They you got dominated. Baker stomping around in the end zone on you. Gosh. Yeah, it wasn't fraudulent. You see, the I want to, I give him benefit of the doubt on offense. Guys, this defense, uh, we were talking three years ago how this Philadelphia Eagles defense was one of the best units in professional football. And all I'm seeing here is one and a half EPA per play on late rushes. I'm seeing almost half an EPA per play on every single play for the Buccaneers. Guys, this t- we know we know we're on this Buccaneers team is not that good. 
but they I'll, have, I'll die on that train. They I'll have, die on that train. They have bent the Eagles and Sirianni and Hurts over their lap, and they're just spanking them, spanking them, spanking them, bang, bang, bang. It is one of the most embarrassing things if you're an Eagles fan. What do you do? You have to get rid of Nick Sirianni. You have to. That is, that is the, the next answer. move. Is Jalen Hurts even the, a good quarterback? We don't know because you've done, can't, you've done you the can't coordinator. Ball. You've done the coordinator thing. You've done it twice now. You've done the coordinator thing. Brand new coordinators, both both positions this year. I just don't understand how they come out so slow. They went down twenty four nothing. I feel like I blinked, and all of a sudden the Bucks are up three scores. Siri, like, Sirianni's not doing a thing. He's not calling anything. He is the head cheerleader, and he stinks at doing that. And did he you is see so the report? Bad. Did you see the report this week that Sirianni's not following the analytics they give him? Because apparently the Eagles spend more money on analytics than any other team in this league. Oh, you better stop. Dylan's going to have a stroke. I know, Dylan. <laughs> he, we, we've talked about it already. He, whenever he gets a fourth down or he gets a, he gets a fourth and goal, or fourth, he's over there spinning a the wheel. He's flipping a coin. He's not putting any research <laughs> into these decisions. He's saying, God, take the wheel. Jesus, take the wheel. We're going to leave it up to chance. I like that. What? what? <laughs> yeah, of course you do, Carter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this Nick Sirianni guy just knows ball. He's watched ball. Dog. Spare no. me. Yeah, he's got that no, dog. No, he, well, didn't he they, say that? He just wants dogs on his team. All, you know, all I want is dogs on my team. Well, buddy, you got the dogs, and you're 2-2 two and two right now with losses to talent. the Falcons and to the Buccaneers. The NFC South is owning you. The worst division in football. Owning you. The Bucs have owned in the last, what, two of the last three years? <laughs> if, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. What is it? And, and uh, you know, Fal- or not Falcons. I'm getting my birds mixed up. Eagles fans will go back and say, well, what about 2022? We, we whooped them in the playoffs. Last two, buddy. That's all I got to say. We have Eagle- Mark and Philly. Eagles fan, fine, right, whatever. But there's a lot of people that have not apologized yet. A lot of, And I will not stop until I get an apology. Oh, and boy. also, 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 you mentioned that the offense, asterisks on the offense today, missing weapons. Sure. For sure. Not, I'm not worried about it there. Defense, Dylan. The defense is a concern. yikes. Yikes. One of their splash signings was supposed to be Bryce Huff. You, I saw a stat, yeah. stat about him today through four games zero sacks, zero quarterback hits, zero quarterback pressures, one total tackle through four games. That was supposed yeah, to be get, one of their big signings. He almost had a Tony Snell. He did. No, <laughs> not, that's for the season. Oh, that's, that's for the for season. The season. <laughs> that's for four games. <laughs> He's almost had a season. He bought season tickets to Tony oh, Snell. Man. Holy crap. I'm yeah, sure. I'm sure we did not want to spend that much time on Bucks. Eagles. No, I had to break out the Bucks jersey. Go ahead. It's I like Jalen Carter though. But last thing on this, Nick Sirianni has to go. I, Ow! I, if you're if you're Bum. an Eagles fan, you know what's crazy though? If Kirk Cousins doesn't have that miraculous drive, they're three and one. Yeah, and I would yeah. I would be I would be singing the same. And well, that is an indictment indictment on their defense though. So like yes. It oh. is a bit of a skill thing, but if they and were three and one right now, <laughs> yes, yes, one hundred percent. If they were three and one right now, we would have, I would be having the same conversation. I bet on the Eagles. I don't, guys, guys, why did you let me do that? You need to watch the live streams. If you it's in the chat, Dylan, why are you betting on the Eagles? Don't splash some cold water on your face. Yeah, come on, hey, wake up, dude. What are we doing here? I'm going to need the fans of this show to do the same thing to me if I touch this the Auburn Tigers ever again. <laughs> I know, I know. There's an NFL show, but the uh, Auburn Tigers are Peyton dead. We're not doing it for you. Dead. To so, me. just to be Dylan, clear, we're still. Go. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. We're still out on the Bucks, right? Still out on the Bucks. Still out. I am. I'll too. die on that train. Deal. I'll die on the Bucks. Right. Bucks being bad train. Deal. Surprising team today, Dylan. Most surprising team. Surprising team. Skip me. Skip me. I go. You get, you get you want to. I know I gave it, but I, that's the that's the one I didn't write down. I have most disappointing. I don't have surprising. Connor. Yeah. Uh, so I wrote down the Vikings. We talked about them a lot. I just couldn't believe they poured it on that early on the Packers. But the one I want to talk about here is the Washington Commanders and Jaden Daniels. Mm, that's genuinely. Yeah. They beat the Cardinals what forty two fourteen today. I am genuinely shocked. Not that they just won the game, but how they won it. And I am so surprised at Jaden Daniels, his decision making, his poise in the pocket as a passer. I cannot believe he's already at this point. Coming into the year, I was like, oh, he's going to run around, take some bad hits, maybe you know, miss a couple games due to injury, and it's not going to be pretty. He has been great through these, through these first yeah. few games. I'm looking at some of the numbers here. It's not even, just, not even just this, but the accuracy is the number one thing. 17 for 24 week one, 23 for 29, 21 for 23, and then today 26 for 30. And he's not turning the ball over. He threw his first pick today. Like, yeah. they were 9 for 12 on third downs. He's poisoned the pocket. He's getting where he wants to go, getting his receivers in good positions. 
I'm just surprised that this Washington team is even this competent, and especially Jane Daniels. But it's fun to watch, so I'm not complaining. It's very fun to watch. It's very fun to watch, and he is dynamite. We are he wasn't sne- sad today. You know what's not being talked about enough right now, too, is we are sneaky seeing a situation that we saw last year where the number two pick is clearly outplaying Uh-oh. the number one pick. Clearly outplaying the number one. In pick. a worse situation. Clearly. I think Washington's a worse situation than Chicago for Caleb Williams to step into. I think Washington does yeah. not have as good of a weapon as Caleb Williams has. And the Washington offensive line was the worst in the league last year. Sam Howell almost died on the field. I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I got my I got my team. I got my team. So this is a team. Have you had you told me week four, two and two, I would have said you're absolutely crazy. Denver Broncos. Yes, Denver Broncos. And this is, I want to say that with the caveat, Denver Broncos defense. Maybe not so much (laughs) Bo Nix or the offense. (laughs) Bo Nix had the funniest stat line of all time today at one point. 7 of 15 for negative 7 yards. I was sitting on my couch and I had more pass yards than Bo Nix today. Yeah, I was was knee deep in a Bojangles 5-piece Supremes box and I had more. (laughs) I, I had more Bojangles Supremes than Bo Nix had passing yards at that point. Wow. <laughs> if you would have told me. That's a great stat. Yeah. Is that on Next Gen? I, or one of Dylan's, gonna, web, one of Dylan's uh, fake nerd websites? What is my, RBSDM? PFF, what is my P- PFF cookout rating? I mean, we're already. <laughs> hunger rating? Is, uh, hunger elite elite numbers. numbers. Su- Supreme per minute? Supreme gluttony, per minute. gluttony rating? Yeah. That, that was a negative connotation. I didn't mean it like that. I'm going. No, bro- it's okay. No, it's fine. No, I know. Diet starts Monday. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going Broncos. Well, so like Monday I night said, football. It's got to start Tuesday. But Tuesday, you have the vice presidential debate. Wednesday? Oh. Mm. Um, I'm in Carolina. I'm going to eat bad. So how about well, next week? Thursday, obviously. Back. We could do Thursday. Yeah. Friday. Wait. Thursday night football. Yeah. Then Friday, there's there might be like a Army versus whoever game. Maybe, on, maybe so we start stuff. it in November. <laughs> the off basketball season. Mm. After the final four. Boom. Okay. Deal. We're, we're, <laughs> well, baseball that. though. Baseball starts end of March. I'll have to skip that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. That's fair. I'm going Broncos next. My most surprising team of the day. Nobody. Nobody surprised me today. Wow. Wow. I don't think anybody surprised me today. The, Nobody about how bad they were. The not even for how bad they were because Jets offense. We saw the Jets yes. are capable of this stinker. I think this was. We've I seen it. Very We've seen it. What twice though now? And once. Does Zach Wilson. Does Zach Wilson possess Aaron Rodgers today? Despite him being <laughs> in that stadium, because this was a prime time Zach Wilson led Jet score. If you look at their games from last year, you look at yeah. ten to nine. That's exactly what it feels like last year. Like Jets fans must have had PTSD today seeing that final score. And maybe surprising bad would have to be the Jets because also you talk. We talked all off season. Well, if Zach Wilson got seven wins for this team. Aaron Rodgers is going to do it. But who have the Jets beaten? The Jets have had a really easy schedule to start this season. There is zero excuses for them being anything worse than 3-1. and one. Anything worse. The Titans. They barely pulled out that Titans game. If Will Levis isn't the dumbest quarterback in this league, the Jets, the Titans win that game. The, the, Bryce Young dude. The only... Yeah, I don't, I'm not talking. Bryce okay, Young I sucks. I know. I just asked. We're not doing this. We're go not doing ahead. this. Go ahead. Yep. But then they're only... Great looking win was the Patriots. We know who this Patriots team is. The worst team in football right now. They're the worst team in football. Yeah. The worst. Yes, they are. They're the Jags worst. Jags are 0-4. Yeah, and I still think the, the Jags would be an 11-point favorite against them. Are they Are they worse than the Titans? Think about it. Oh, the could Patriots, Al- Patriot, could Patriots Alabama are worse Alabama beat the Patriots? <laughs> no, no, we have to have a serious conversation. Could Alabama beat the Eagles? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, my most surprising oh, team. Re- really, really nobody, though, but keep going, Connor. Real quick on the Jets. Um, is it time to have a little bit of a conversation about Brees Hall and or Garrett Wilson? Because, well, or is it more of a Rodgers problem? Because I'm looking at some of these numbers. Brees Hall hasn't topped 16 carries in a game this year yet. Maybe that's sometimes due to game script. Garrett Wilson hasn't that- had more than six catches yet. I just thought they were both going to break out this year with Rodgers, right? Wasn't that the narrative? So, with Brees Hall... 
Braylon Allen has stepped up and been. Yes. I think it's very hard to say, to, to take snaps from Braylon Allen and give, the, and give them to Brees Hall because he's been very impressive from what we've seen so far, early returns. And then, but that's a performance thing. Brees Hall hasn't been performing well enough, therefore Braylon Allen I, eats into his numbers. But I think, it's, I think it's less Brees Hall has not been performing and more Braylon has been. Braylon Allen has been. Yes, I blanked okay. on his last name for a second. That's fair. And with Garrett Wilson... I, I can't speak much to, to the three games before, but I saw that graphic where it was, it had Garrett Wilson stats and, you know, Pat Sertain was on him the whole, and Pat Sertain's a pretty good the cornerback. So it's like, he is. I, I think that resources are being spent on Garrett Wilson. And that's why like Lazard is having, is having so much success. Yeah. So if okay. I had to guess, that's what I would say. Most disappointing team today, Dylan. I'm not going team. I'm switching it up. Oh, Steelers defense. Steelers Pick. defense was the most disappointing thing today because this is the Fake. one great, great caveat there. Yes. And that is, you know, you play this Colts team, you, you have Richardson, you have Flacco. The, the things that were inexcusable for the Steelers defense is how much success they allowed on late down pass plays, third and tens. You, you had the 15 yard touchdown pass from Flacco. You have a 12 yard pass to convert that when Richardson was still in. These are things, if you're the Steelers, you have Justin Fields in at quarterback. And this is the first game for the Steelers. You could say it, Justin Fields played better than the defense. Like Justin Fields provided more value than the defense yeah. did. That's the first time you could say that for the Steelers this year. And that, <laughs> if <laughs> moving forward and moving forward, I would say you cannot rely on Justin Fields outplaying your defense if you want to have a winning season. So that's a huge, mm. huge point of concern for me. Steelers defense today against the Colts. Mm. Connor, most disappointing thing. Um, This is tough. Most disappointing. First one I wrote down, Eagles getting blown out by the Bucks because I was so high on them <laughs> preseason. What was, the, what was the score, Connor? <laughs> 33 to 16. Oh, okay. Right. Um, Double, doubled them up. That, that was disappointing. And then I wrote down the Jets looking like they did last year, losing to Bo Nix at home. Those were my two <laughs> disappointing ones. But if you want to stick on the Steelers real quick, I think Najee Harris was pretty damn disappointing as well. I mean, Ooh. genuinely, you look at some of these numbers, 13 attempts, 19 yards rushing on the dead last ranked rush defense in the Indianapolis Colts. And I get it. Game script, fine. 13 for 19 is not cutting it. Like, come on. Also, but wasn't he dealing with injury? He was like questionable leading leading up to this and and all but, that junk. But also, also, what did you expect out of Najee Harris? Yeah, no, I know that's true. <laughs> that's that's like, very true. If you had high expectations for Najee Harris, that's that's on you. Shout out Josh Downs, eight for eight for eighty two with a touchdown. He's back. I have a He's lot back. of different ways I want to go with this disappointing team right now. I'll go. I'll do multiple real quick. Number one, the Cleveland Browns. Oh my mm. gosh! Yes, the womp Cleveland womp. Browns. The season's over, done. I, 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 you, can we cross them off for the playoffs? Death of the fully guaranteed contract. Death of the yeah. fully guaranteed contract. We don't even need to go into that much. It was. It's just so pitiful what's happening to this Browns team. The, and Watson the, hasn't had two hundred pass yards yet, Carter. <laughs> Yeah, Yikes. and also hey. they gotta get up. They got they Guys, gotta figure out some way to get this run game going. Don't worry, Nick Chubb's coming back. He's gonna save the team. Don't worry. If That's they, all I'm seeing if, on Twitter. If they can get the run game going, I I will think differently of this team. But I just don't. I'm not gonna trust Nick Chubb coming off a major injury like that. Sure, I think that's fair. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, another disappointing team. We already talked about the Jets as well, the Packers as well. We've discussed them. Miss, most disappointing thing referees they were bad today mm. there was a bad calls mm. today yeah panthers Bengals in particular isn't that right oh my gosh it's on oh, my mind wah, it's wah, on my wah. mind oh, oh my team my team loses and it's not their fault wah 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 no it is their fault <laughs> a tale as old as time mm, a tale as <laughs> a tale as old as time thanks connor I, I'm, I'm i'm telling them it's i said it's their fault i said it's their fault niners patriots did anybody catch that game i know where this is a bits and pieces right now. bits and pieces yeah, i that, bet on the patriots that might have been the nap game. That might have, it could have, it could have, should have been the nap game. I mean, the, the, the Browns Raiders came down to the wire, so I guess it's hard. But yeah. Yeah. hindsight's but always really, rosy retrospection. Yeah, who really cared about the Browns Raiders game, though? Uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's <true. clears> a <throat> good call. Keep your head up performance, Connor. Uh, keep my head up performance. I wrote down Andy Dalton and the Carolina Panthers. That's what that I is had. My, that's my keep your head up performance because, yes, they lost today, but just as a fan, how refreshing is it to compete? 
to just get first downs. There's a feel real like football you're going somewhere. They can yeah. put a drive together. Yeah, I mean, I know they lost, but it was there. There were some positive <laughs> signs there, especially from Xavier Leggett as well. And that defense is very, very, very bad. The other one I had, Drake May, keep your head up because you're going to need no. to come in pretty soon. And this Patriots <laughs> offense is abysmal, and you just need to keep your confidence high. Don't let it get in your head if you go 0-10 as a starter or something crazy like that. Just keep your head up. Your time will come. Um, all Outside of the Panthers, that was my pick as well. I mean, they were just competitive, fun game. I'm, they're, they're not going to be a good team this year, but fun team. League pass team. The L.A. Chargers – Another, they're just going to be a keep yep. your head up team almost every week I, because Harbaugh's going to keep them in games. I was mm-hmm. I was a little worried about this because they they're lacking in some personnel parts, and then you have Justin Herbert who just always seems to be injured. But I think that Jim Harbaugh and Jesse Minter, defensive coordinator, they have impressed me so far. They have kept kept this team in games that they would not have been in under Brandon Staley. And I think that says a lot. I think that's a very good pick. Yeah. Dylan, what's your pick? Keep your head up, Nick Sirianni. It's almost over, baby. It's almost over. I know you're trying to throw it. You're trying to throw it. Poor old Howie Roseman's got you under his foot. He's got his foot on your neck right now, and he's holding you hostage of coaching this football team. Nick, it's almost over, man. You got maybe three or four more games, and then you're home free. You can go back to working at McDonald's. You can go. What <laughs> What do they do in Philadelphia? Fries in the bag. Yeah, put the fries in the bag, buddy. What do they What do they do over there? Go. Yeah, you can get a job as washing the Liberty Bell. Uh, go kiss that statue of the fake boxer you guys have in your city. You, Uh-oh. Nick Sirianni, keep your head up, buddy. It's almost over. You're almost done. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. That was ten Thank out of ten. You. Keep your head up, loser. Performance. And, and you don't have to start yelling at Chiefs fans again when you like it's it's all good. You're all, you're almost done, man. You're almost done. You're almost done. It's am- we- it's amazing that there's a fan base so united behind getting rid of their coach like this. It's crazy. Like a fan base as volatile as the Eagles. Like there's a lot of Eagles fans out there, and everything Con- I see is lack of preparation. Get Sirianni out. And it's, this, this is this is crazy. And it's interesting how quick they flip on him because I was having conversations with these doofuses from Delco Uh-oh. about how that wasn't their coach's fault. It wasn't their coordinator's fault. They just found ways to win games. And now we're sitting here less than 12 months <laughs> later and they want everything blown up. Who was the guy? Who was the defensive coordinator last year? Desai. They were showing up at camp trying to get that guy fired. <laughs> the, these are people's jobs. We've talked about it. You try to get people fired from their jobs. I expect nothing less from these guys. I expect nothing less. Have you thought about getting Ryan Day fired? I I had this conversation with my in-laws, right? Uh, Because the Michigans, we don't need to go deep dive college football. Michigan State game did not start very great, and they said Ryan Day's gone. I said, who are you going to go get that's going to win you just about (laughs) every single game in the year, get you to the playoffs, beat your rival for the most part, who are you going to go get? You want Urban Meyer coming back? Once things go poorly, he's going to fake a heart attack, and he's going to be going back to big noon at Fox. So who do you want? (laughs) Yeah, he'll be back on Tinder, that's for sure. He'll be back on uh, Tinder. He, he'll be grabbing <laughs> booty at the local roosters. That's just what Urban Meyer does. That's Pro what card, Urban Meyer does. Card. Get, it, card. get it out. <laughs> Graphics grabbing too. booty at the local roosters. And yeah, you you can't fire Ryan Day. That's a different discussion. I'll send a message to the Carter Cast, Carter Cast Graphics team ASAP yeah. to get that one out. That is a fantastic quote. Uh, right now, we're recording during the Bills Ravens game. Ravens up 7 0 right now. Derrick Henry, 87 yard touchdown to start things off former titan monday night football monday night football ladies and gentlemen we are we won our parlay last week in the nfl we're back we are three legs down and one to go in the in the nfl this week our last leg comes down to dylan fading the lions once again in a prime time spot our last leg is seahawks plus three and a half i want this here and loud i am not hedging no you can't the seahawks might be the better team diamond hands Diamond hands can't hedge. Yeah. The, what we've seen from the Seahawks, and I'll touch real quick. I My biggest question coming into the season was, is Mike McDonald going to be able to make a big enough difference on defense? Defense mm-hmm. has been the issue for the Seahawks. So far, early returns say, yeah. Now you could say they haven't played the best offenses, and I think that's fair. But the one thing you can take away from those games is how much improved the tackling looks and that's something no matter who you're playing that is a fundamental and it looks so much better this year i love the seahawks ben's not here guys trust tree can i say this doesn't go out on the show 
think mm. I think the Seahawks win the game. I think they beat. Mm. I think they beat them. Well, they better because we got them plus three and a half. Let's Jill. go. We got them plus three and a half. Real quick, let's preview. Uh, let's do a quick preview of Monday Night Football. Seahawks, Lions, we, Titans, Dolphins. Let's be honest. Uh, poop bowl, to- toilet bowl. Um, Bet which, the under and which one? Uh, take a nap. Which one's the poop bowl? <laughs> Titans, Dolphins. Okay. All right. Yeah. You just like, have two of the most exciting quarterbacks in the NFL, Snoop Huntley and Will Levis, and it's a nap. If fest. you're in an unfortunate situation where you only have one TV, you might be in a fortunate situation on Monday Night Football not having to watch Titans versus Dolphins. You're funny well, guy. Some would you're say, funny guy. some would say, oh, watch it for an hour until the second game starts. Nah, cook dinner. Do something yeah. nice. No, I'll take a nap. At least I'm not getting yeah. Titans tickets in a cookout tray. That's how you got your ticket to the Panthers game today. <laughs> no, no, unfortunately. I got them on CQ. Just kidding. Yeah, code Carticast. Uh, use code Carticast, $20 off. Seahawks Lions. Dylan, go. I love the Seahawks here. It's the last leg of the parlay. The defense has just taken a step up, and I trust it. Jared Goff has not looked great this year. The defense has for the Lions, but... I, I trust the Seahawks defense, and I think Geno Smith outplays Jared Goff in this game. Ooh, I think the Seahawks keep this game very close. Seahawks Lions games are usually very, very close over the years and have a lot of points. I like the over in this game, and I like the Lions to win by two in this game. Just barely win, but I think the Seahawks cover. Connor. This this feels like an overtime game, doesn't it? This feels oh, like a game. Oh, I like that. Mm. This feels like a game that's going to overtime. Shout out uh, Action Network. I think it's Nick Giffen that does the overtime bets. I don't know if this is one of his or not, but this feels like a prime time spot. They did it last year. Like you touched on the Seattle defense, Dylan, they've been much improved this year under Ryan McDonald. I think this is a game where Jared Goff probably throws a pick, and then all of a sudden the Lions come back and win on the game-winning field goal, or they win in overtime, probably two or three points. But the Seahawks still cover, so I like that. I think it will be a high-scoring game. I hope it is, though. I hope it's a fun game. I love it. I love it. Anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here? We're doing receivers? Oh, yes. I forgot to write it down. Yeah, absolutely. Connor, talk to us. Yeah, so one question I wanted to ask you guys for coming on the pod today, and I wrote this down. Gun to your head. Wide receiver has to get you 75 yards, regardless of the matchup, regardless of the quarterback. Let's say they get a random quarterback, average quarterback, whatever, regardless of the matchup. They have to get you 75 yards. Basically, you're picking a consistent guy. What receiver are you choosing? Because some of these elite receivers we've seen, it's like, oh, 150 yards this week. 12 this week. Just who's your guy gun to your head to get you 75 yards to save your life? Order is going to matter here. Uh, who goes first? Because I think, I think Connor, you and I for sure have the top guy. And I think, Carter, so too. I think we all three might have the one guy. Yep. I think we do. Order is going to matter. Okay. Here's okay. Here's, here's how we start. What team? You're wearing the Jersey right now. Oh, yeah, not the oh. same. Not the same. Okay. Not the same. Not I think Dylan same. and I are in the same boat. Carter, what team? Uh, the Minnesota Vikings. No, absolutely not. Oh, oh this okay. is great. This good, is great. Good, 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 good. Okay, all right. You want me to start? Yeah, start. I'm going Mike Evans. Every time I look at this box score, every time he's on the field, it's 70, 75, 80 yards a game, sometimes more. Most consistent 1,200 yard seasons I've ever seen. What was his eight or nine straight thousand yard seasons going to be this year? He's doing this with Baker as his quarterback, with a 45 year old Tom Brady, with all these weapons around him, Chris Godwin, you know, all those weapons they had in the Brady years. I just think if there was one game with any sort of quarterback, he's proven to get it done with all skill levels of quarterbacks. But Mike Evans hmm. has the tendency to disappear at times, like he did against just, the Broncos. He has he has uh, one one in every four games. You're like, wait, I thought they had Mike Evans on this team, and he's one of the best receivers in football. And everybody mm. loses an anytime touchdown bet on Mike Evans, and then the next week he has three touchdowns. Yeah, that's fair. I just I just think of some of these top guys. I don't want to spoil any picks, but like I don't know, like a Tyreek Hill or like a I don't know some of these top guys. It's like they could easily have like four catches for 25 yards. Justin Jefferson's my pick, and it's very very easy. This guy's quarterback proof. This guy's getting yards with Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall, Kirk Cousins, Sam Darnold. You can put me out there. I'm going to get this guy 75 yards. Justin Jefferson, this guy, if my life is on the line, I'm picking Justin Jefferson to get me 75 yards as long as he's healthy. I think it's clear. This guy is dominant. This guy gets production no matter who is throwing in the ball. Justin Jefferson's my pick. We went completely different directions. Completely different directions. I went Michigan man Nico Collins. That's mm. tough. No reaction there? 
We haven't seen it. Like, it was this the second year in the league, third year in the league? We what haven't is, seen a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, like, I don't know. I think that something. might be a good pick. Listen, guy, he's four. Just, uh, yeah. This We're, guy is a red zone monster because all of a sudden Scott Hansen flips to a game. And you're like, Nico Collins is wide open streaking for another 60 yard catch. What I'm going is to say. Is he quarterback proof? I. I'm going to say yes because there was a time where he was he was catching passes from Mills. So he his first year yeah. was the year before Stroud came in. And what I looked at when I was doing this exercise, it's very interesting to see how we went about this because I think we went about it differently all three of us. I wanted to see guys that could force missed tackles, who could who could run fast, who had a good completion percentage when targeted and uh their completions overexpected. So you have Stroud. You can make that point. You look at his targets. I understand that doesn't necessarily apply to this, but people trust him. He has the most targets in the NFL after it gets adjusted for today's games. You see that he has the top speed on a run this year, almost 22 miles per hour. He's forced five missed tackles, which I think is the eighth most, and nearly a 70% completion rate. He catches the ball when it's thrown to him. You got you gun to my head, and you're like, you need someone to get 75 yards this game with a random quarterback. I'm going Nico Collins. That's a good answer. I can't even lie. Yeah. That's a really good answer. I'll can, give it to you. I just went Mike Evans. My thought process was more like big receiver can win one-on-one down the field, and he could get 75 yards in one play. There's been plenty of times Mike Evans has caught one over the middle and taken it to the yeah, house. Yeah, but also I think Justin Jefferson also is in that same category as well. It's interesting because, Connor, you went with the guy that is going to get the one-on-one contested catches, and it seems like Carter and I went with the guy that if he gets mm-hmm. the ball in open space, he's going to make the most of it. Also, I Mike think, Evans, sneaky, uh, pretty good injury bet. He, he's he's, yeah, on he's, injury, yeah. he, he's I, on the field all the time. I, don't think, I, think, I think that's unfair to Justin Jefferson. I think he is one of the best top – I mean, I think Mike Evans is the best one-on-one guy in the red zone. I don't think that's clear right now. I think that's very obvious right now, but – I think I would take Jefferson, too, in that spot. This guy is making crazy plays mm. one-on-one in the end zone. Well, it it's is all Sam, Sam Darnold. Darnold. Close it. Yeah. <laughs> that throw. No, 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 no. But you make a good point. That throw was unbelievable oh, today. But, yeah, you know, I, I, I would go Justin Jefferson there. I think that's a great point. This, I, I think those are all three good answers. This was an awesome so. exercise. Connor, thank you for bringing it up. I'm curious. Did we have any other guys, like, in the conversation? I want to hear honorable mentions real quick because I had a couple that I thought of. I didn't. I just went Justin Jefferson. Yeah, me too. I I had, you know, obviously early Malik Neighbors guy gets targeted so much really fast. And then A.J. Brown when he's healthy. And then I, I thought about Debo Samuel, but then I was like, eh, I don't you know. You can't go Debo. There's a lot of games Debo disappears or sneaky caveat here. Rush yards. I didn't say rush yards. That's I said receiving yards. So. I, looked at, and, I looked at Saquon Barkley as a um like a, as a receiver. Mm. Yeah. Neighbors is a great pick. Neighbors, because yeah. I mean, right now you see him with Daniel Jones, and he, he's making Daniel Jones. He might get Daniel Jones paid again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also, well, I want to. Uh, oh my gosh, I had a point and it left me. I, I, oh, I that's all right. Should we wrap up oh, the show uh, then? Amon Ross St. Brown, another pretty good answer, I feel like. No, nah, I don't like him. <laughs> okay. No, I like him. Fair. Honorable yeah. mention. Yeah. We don't need to get into that. Yeah. We don't need to get no. into that. Let's wrap up the show here. Use code use code CarterCast at SeatGeek twenty dollars off your first purchase at Connor underscore Sparrow at Wilkerson A Dillon at Carter VA at CarterCast on all social media. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube. Like subscribe. Like subscribe. Like subscribe. Please 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 like subscribe. Rate review wherever you're listening on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And then Dylan, your live streams Monday morning. Yes, this won't be out before then. I don't think. Is it going to be out before then? It'll be it'll be out it'll be out late. If tonight. you're it'll, if you're watching 8 a.m. Eastern live stream, we're going to be recapping a little bit more in depth every game from this week, and then early bets. I think right now we're sitting at five and two. We have the Ravens; they're up. So if that gets home, six and two. So good week. I love it. And then college football and NFL back as always. Make sure to tune into those as well. We'll see y'all on Tuesday for the college football show. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. We'll see you. All right. Bye bye.